Horus Heresy, the new miniature war game from Games Workshop has just been released following a massive marketing campaign. And whether it succeeds or fails will have huge reverberations, not only for the game line, but also will determine the very fate of Games Workshop as a company. Here's why. In 2020, the world was hit with an unthinkable event, COVID-19. This was a global health crisis and completely unprecedented in living memory. And it was a really rough time, to put it mildly, for everybody, except Games Workshop. For them, it was more like a serial killer coming across a hitchhiker on an empty road. Sure, they didn't create the situation, but boy, there was gonna be a killing. And a killing there was. See, lots of people get into Warhammer as a kid or a teenager, but then they drop out as they get older and discover alcohol or work. Miniature Wargaming eats up a lot of time and money, especially an army level game like Warhammer 40k. But during COVID, the bars were closed, work was furloughed, everyone was stuck inside and suddenly had a ton more free time and free money. And so what happened? Well, they returned to Warhammer, their teenage bow. And as a result, times were pretty swell over COVID for Games Workshop. It was kind of the golden age for Warhammer, as the earth grew ill, Games Workshop grew strong, like a ghoulish vampire. In fairness, selling miniatures is probably one of the more ethical ways of turning a profit during a pandemic. They weren't exactly scalping toilet paper in those early days. So COVID for Games Workshop was two years of absolute crazy profits. Shareholders were f***ing pleased as punch and none of that kitty stuff either. I'm talking Everclear grid here. And for a while there, you couldn't Google the words Games Workshop without being assaulted by tons of mainstream press outlets telling you how much sales had surged, how it was the best year ever for Games Workshop. And that's good, right? That's good for Games Workshop. Well, what happens when you make more money than ever before in a single year as a public company? Well, the next year, you're gonna have to make even more money. This is the big downside of being a public company. You have shareholders, and shareholders expect growth. No matter the context, no matter the reasons, like the Turinids or the Wansler. They want more, more, more. They just want growth, no matter the cost. There are no excuses that can be made. So therefore, Kevin Rowntree and the rest of the old GW executives have a bit of a problem. They need to grow Games Workshop's profits to more than it was during COVID, their best years ever. But here's the thing, their profits grew over COVID for reasons that were totally out of their control. They didn't do anything to earn that extra revenue, they were just in the right place at the right time. Except, sure, I guess that they did raise their prices throughout 2020 and 2021, and I suppose that probably helped grow revenues a little. Didn't earn them much goodwill, though. And thus, the problem facing Games Workshop is that they can't exactly replicate the COVID years. They don't actually have a one-way line to Nurgle. They can only reach out to Slaanesh right now. And a lot of the people who did get into Warhammer over COVID have subsequently dropped out. Life has kinda returned back to normal for a lot of people, and many of them don't have the same amount of time, or indeed money, to spend. Which is pretty pertinent considering the cost of living crisis that is looming on the horizon that in a lot of ways has already begun. And if you want to see this in action, well you can look at the latest Games Workshop annual report. Look at the Australian market and what do you see? The market down there has absolutely tanked and Games Workshop are blaming COVID. Importantly, not their insane prices apparently. No, it's, it's all COVID's fault and third party local stores as well. Both of which in reality happen to be their greatest allies? If I didn't know better, I think that Kevin Roundtree kept a worm tongue around him. So then, what is Games Workshop's plan? How will they produce more money than their greatest years on record? How will they feed the great maw of Mammon? That which ever hungers for tribute. Well, I think I know, and Horus Heresy is so instrumental, so central to this little scheme, that if it does not sell like feet picks in r slash grey nights, then Games Workshop are in big, big trouble. In fact, if it doesn't sell well enough, then it's probably likely that their entire business model is absolutely fucked. And here's why. If you read the annual report that Games Workshop put out covering 2021 last year, you will 
find this intriguing little line from Kevin Rontree, Games Workshop CEO. <clears throat> I will continue to set the bar higher. It is worth noting that historically, the launch year of a new Warhammer 40,000 edition is normally the financial high point until the next edition of Warhammer 40,000. <laughs> and therein lies the sting in the teal, the twist of the nipple, the piss in the swimming pool. For this is the most revealing and, it must be said, most dramatic statement ever made by Kevin Rowntree. Seriously, he did not need to insert a dramatic pause into that sentence. It's a written report, Kevin. When I read it, I could only imagine him in a top hat and twirling a mustache. I was about ready for a <laughs> at the end of it. But it goes to show that there is an obvious answer to their woes, and they know it. It's simple. Just release another edition of Warhammer 40k. But they can't exactly do that right Right now, they just released one right at the beginning of COVID. I mean, they can release these new season books, I guess, but not a full new edition. So what to do? What to do? Hmm. Ah, of course. Just release a new game. And in walks Horus Heresy. This year's new release. And Games Workshop have swung a ton of weight behind this. They're really going for the fences with this one. We had a massive influencer campaign, tons of community posts. The website has been decked out in horse heresy content and local game stores have been absolutely inundated with more Age of Darkness starter boxes. And there it sits, proudly eased upon the billboard of the Games Workshop website, sat between Warhammer 40k and... Huh, Games Workshop to a Middle Earth miniatures game? <laughs> Since when? And so, it is their plan that through Horse Heresy, Games Workshop will be able to reach a, quote, financial high point this year. And then next year, it will be a new edition of Warhammer 40k to make them an unprecedented amount of cash. And then the year after that, it will be Age of Sigmar. And then the year after that, it will be Warhammer the Old World. And then the year after that, it will be Horus Heresy 3rd edition. And then the year after that, it will be back to Warhammer 40k. And then the year after that, it will be back again to Age of Sigmar. And again, and over, and over, and more, and more, and forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. And there will be no year where there is not some mainline game being forced, pushed into your sweaty, clammy, non-oil-stained hands as your dopamine-addicted, hype-addled brain desperately seeks out the next mainline product from Games Workshop for just one more hit, just one more time, hoping that this, this time, maybe I can finally grasp it. That nostalgic moment, that moment, that little bit of youthful exuberance, that first smell of Citadel being pot. I looked in the mirror the other day. I don't even recognize myself anymore. I got old. <laughs> Well, that's their plan anyway, I think. A new mainline product every year. So, what happens if Horus Heresy doesn't sell? What if the plan doesn't work? Well, the choo-choo hype train kind of goes off the rails a little bit there. If Games Workshop really are trying to make sure that they have a new mainline product releasing a new edition every single year, then Warhammer 40k is likely to be slotted for next year. And sure, it might sell. It's Warhammer 40k. It's kind of like the Titanic. Unsinkable until it's not. But will Age of Sigmar sell the year after that? If Horus Heresy fails, does that put Warhammer the Old World in jeopardy? Will we see much support for Horus Heresy in future if the Age of Darkness starter box is a non-starter? And importantly, will we see the shareholders cry out for a sacrifice to their dark master and hope for greener pastures in future. Wouldn't be the first time that a CEO has been given the axe for a bad move. Because make no mistake, one of the worst possible things to happen to any public company is to have a blip, a quick 
spurt of unsustainable growth. A single year of unrepeatable profit. Because with investment capitalism, the returns have always got to be greater than the year before. Always a little sweeter. So it could be the case that as much as COVID was really good for Games Workshop for the two years that it occurred, it could ultimately be the death of Games Workshop. Stock price goes up real high, looks good, but that just gives it a lot more room to fall. And when stock price is falling badly, investors start to pull out, executives begin to aggressively monetize in order to try and eke out more profit from an ever dwindling user base. And the company can just spiral into the gutter. And for Games Workshop, we're already seeing the share price drop like a rock. And as we enter a recession, I don't see that getting any better. But maybe Games Workshop's gambit will work. Maybe it won't. Personally, I'm not sure that Horus Heresy will be able to quite deliver on what Games Workshop needed to do. I just don't think that it'll make the sales that it needs to. And that's not to say that I think the game will fail in any sense. I think that the Horus Heresy community will grow, and I think that it will probably be a relatively fun game. But I'm not sure if Horus Heresy will perform well enough to satisfy the demands and needs of hungry shareholders. When I say that Horus Heresy has to succeed, what I'm saying is that it needs to sell absolute gangbusters. And it has to produce profits well in excess of last year. And I think that's going to be pretty tough. Just looking at the game right now, the price point for entrance is extremely high and customers of Games Workshop products have been increasingly showing an unwillingness to spend tons and tons of money as evidenced by the falling revenue in Games Workshop's latest annual report. And as much as Warhammer customers are generally conceived of by investors as sticky, i.e. they are addicted to the plastic crack, even they have their limits. And if the prices do go up, they will spend less. And Games Workshop have really been testing the waters lately. What have been the price point of the latest couple of releases, if not an attempt to see how far GW can push the average consumer? But I still think it remains to be seen just how elastic miniature consumer spending is. And I'm not too sure how many $300 box sets that this marketplace can sustain. And yes, before you type it up in the comments, I'm aware the Games Workshop have been likely planning to push Horus Heresy as a mainline game for a couple of years now. But I suspect that the scope of this launch has expanded massively since COVID created the need for increasingly excessive profit and revenue growth. Originally, Horus Heresy might have been intended to be a release akin to the re-release of Necromunda in 2017. Not like another version of Warhammer 40k. But here we are now, staring at a $300 starter box and a roadmap filled with monthly releases. The game is now available to buy and we'll see how well it sells in due time. And for Kevin Rountree's sake, I guess it has to sell pretty fucking well. And if you want to hear my analysis of that latest annual report, check out my video here. And as always, a huge thank you to Steven Jackson, Earthwormia, and Sonic Bread. I couldn't do this without you guys. And of course, a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Your support is invaluable. And if you want to help support the channel, why not check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures. And I'll catch you there. You get access to all sorts of exclusive things and early access to videos and ad-free content, things like that. And even maybe in the future, some Vermintide 2 games. And as always, I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.